Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. So now let's talk about materials. How do we create a material for something like this? All right, so uh, I'm just gonna split this view out. I'm gonna go into my uh, shader editor and I'm going to create a new material and I'll set up render view and we'll find a good angle to look at this guy. Let's come over here and let's start off with um, a Veroni. And we're gonna grab a color ramp and I'll plug the distance into the factor and I'll plug the color into the, we'll start off with bump, I think. So I'll grab it here, shift A, and I'll create a bump node. And I'll take the color and I'll put it into the height. And I'll take the normal and put it into the normal. And I'll turn my strength right down. And now let's figure out what's gonna look best. So I'm gonna go uh, F2, maybe even smooth F1. Um, and I'll change my scale. And we can get these cool like vein-like things with this mode. Which are kind of cool. Looks like this sort of like, um, almost like a subsurface vein thing. And we could, we could use that actually. So if I come over here, I'm gonna take my base color down. They've got this like sort of just really flat gray color. But let's say I wanted to take this vein and kind of have it pop just a little bit, like, like it's some kind of blood vessel, let's say. So it's, it's pressing up against the surface of the skin and it's changing the color a little bit. If I look at just what the straight value looks like, so if I go into emission, you can see that's, that's what it's appearing like. I can use that in my subsurface. Now subsurface uh, is a cool effect for, just duplicate this, for creating a lighting effect where it shows um, light passing into an object. So like butter is a good example. It kind of has this like slight glow or skin. You can look at, if you hold your, hold a light right up to your, your thumb, you know, your thumb kind of glows. So if I take that and plug it into the subsurface, you're gonna see that it's gonna start. Now we're getting this red color. And the reason for that is the subsurface radius. So this stands for red, green, and blue and it's, it's basically telling how do you want the colors to go? Like how, what color, what, what color of light do you want to pass uh, deepest and which ones do you want to just go a little bit into the surface? And so it's, it's a way of changing sort of the, the color of the subsurface. Um, so let's, um, we'll keep it with that. Like that makes sense. But I want to take my color and if I bring it so that it's kind of similar to my base color, you can see that we're getting just right here on the edges this little bit of red glow through, and that's because of this radius being one. So like if I made this a two, that red's gonna get stronger. If I go five, it's gonna be really strong. Um, if we wanted to kind of make it more of a white, we could bring all of these numbers up so that they're close. But I think that red is probably the coolest. Oh yeah, you can see. So you see right here, it's really glowing quite bright, the red. All right, uh, let's create a little bit more texture. So it's good to use when you're using like a bump map to have two types of texture at work. So we've got this vein texture, which is cool, but we probably need something else as well. So let's create a noise texture and I'll create another color ramp. I'll just duplicate this one, bring the factor in and uh, let's have a look at mixing these together. So I'm gonna go mix RGB. I'll click here and I'll bring this one in and I'm gonna switch this to multiply, to multiply them together. Um, I might actually wanna to add to this one as opposed to multiply, because instead of getting stuff, getting rid of stuff, because we already have a lot of black coming out of this, so it's just the veins. If I add, it might give me a little bit more, um, need to bring my scale right down. So, yeah, so now you can see that we're getting just that little bit of extra, a little bit of extra life in this thing. Now what's nice is this bump map is corresponding with the subsurface really well. So that subtlety of both of those things working together really starts to sell uh, the believability of the object. Now I wanna take the contrast down. I feel like this little noise bump's a bit too harsh. So I'm just gonna bring this up so it's a bit lighter. And you can see the lighter I go with it, the more subtle the bump becomes. So the more these things are closer to white, um, what we could also do, let's try this, light, point light. That was if we turn it up to like a thousand. Ugh, creepy. 
make it red, make it green like the movie poster. Turn on bloom. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so um, other things that we could do, I might turn the green point light off just for now, bring this back up. Um, now let's talk about the surface. So I've just left the basic surface stuff here. Um, Roughness is, is, is good. We could, if we drop the roughness down, it's going to look more and more wet. Okay, so um, one thing we could do is we could actually add in some color into a couple of these places. So these sections here, let me switch to face mode. So again, because we did those that flow, we've got that really easy way of just selecting this whole group. I'm going to hit Control Plus just to expand the selection. Now, I've got a couple of different things I could do. Um, I create a new material for these guys and assign it. Or what I could also do is just come over here to Vertex Paint and select these vertexes and I could paint them. Switch to Vertex Paint Mode and go to my tool. I can paint these vertexes. And the advantage of using paint is that it's not all perfect. I can keep it a bit messy, like I can have bits that are lighter than others. I can also select all and I can like come in and select just a couple of like different bits like this. Like I could slightly color this section up here. And this is kind of like texture painting, right? Except we haven't unwrapped any of these and I'm just kind of, it's associating one of these, these gray values with uh, individual vertexes. So I can just like maybe do this. So we got all these like random vertexes. Now, what do we do with this? Well, automatically by painting onto this guy, or we go to this little green tab, we've got vertex colors. It's created this new group here called, well, COL for color. We can call it whatever we wanted to, but I can now bring this over. So if I switch back into object mode and go back into our shader, I can bring this in now. So if I go vertex color, I get this little drop down menu and I can select that group that we just, we just painted. Okay, now I can grab a color ramp and I can insert this in to change basically what the uh, what I'm doing. So this is just black and white values. So if I if I plug this into the emission, you can see there are the black and white values that we painted. They're now emitting out of the object. So I can use that to drive stuff like a color ramp. Okay, so now I can create different colors. So if I went here, right, I could select um, this guy and I could pick the color we already have for our base color. And then this one I could like maybe kind of go for a darker color. And now if I plug this into base color is that it's using those vertex colors to paint basically this extra color into our scene. I can change this as well, increase the contrast. Um, I could flip them. So in this case, what I thought would be interesting was if um, this color had just a little bit of saturation to it, just a bit more of like a flesh color that maybe. And you just you can see we're getting really interesting stuff with the breakup, with the veins, with the subsurface. Um, if we turn our point light back on on the inside, it's just pretty cool. Now you could use these vertex colors for anything. We could, we could paint like dry sections and wet sections and use this to drive the, uh, the, the roughness. So for example, like we could do that actually, that's not a bad idea. Like if I got rid of this out of the base color, and uh, grab this color ramp here, let's say, just random, and plug this into the roughness. Now I never wanna have zero roughness because that's perfect reflection. So I need to change that once we come up to here. So I'll just bring this up. So it's more of like a, a wet color here. And then white is gonna be completely non-rough. So I don't want that either. So I can bring that over like this. So now it's just going to be kind of, it's, it's more of like the, the wet color in the areas that we painted black, whereas it's more of the dry color on those other zones. So vertex colors are pretty powerful, pretty cool way of painting stuff in there. Um, bring this back into my base color. It's cool stuff. Might play with the strength here. Yeah, I think it's a bit too, it's a bit too much, I think, when it goes, I don't know, that looks all right. It really brings out that vertex map. What happens if we change the distance? That's nice. 
this bump is really working well for us. Like it looks like these like veins are almost wrapped around. Let's see what this material looks like when we place it on the ground. All right, give ourselves a black background. Let's see what it looks like. Let's 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 create a new vertex color group. So I'll hit the plus symbol. And I'm gonna go into vertex paint mode. And come over into here. And let's see, I'll just click the little render icon so that I'm looking at this one. Although it's still just showing me the first. Why why is that? Is there a what happens if I do this and then jump back into that? Okay, so it's just duplicated, right? I think there's an easier way to fill the whole region, but all right, so for the second one, I'm just going to grab these areas here, like so. Um, and the reason why I'm not like selecting the faces themselves and then um, assigning a new material to it is because I want to have a little bit of blend between the two. If I'm using vertex colors, you can see it's not a hard edge. It's kind of got this softness to it. So now what I can do is I can come over here, back into this view, go back to object mode, shift D to duplicate and grab the second vertex group. And um, I could even create a new material for it to be completely honest. Like we could go shift D, bring this up here and do uh, mix shader and send this one in here and then use this uh, vertex color group as the factor. Now you can see we've got a totally separate material on these sections here. So now for these bits, you know, we could go for that leathery kind of, uh, that leathery look. So let's see if we use uh, a noise, I think, and I'll just shift D, bring this bump up factor into the height. And then I might grab a texture coordinate for this one so we can stretch it out a little bit. And then a mapping node take the generated into the vector and then vector into the vector. And then I'll take this normal and I'll put it into the normal of our second material. So I'm increasing that. I'm gonna get rid of this material off of this guy. <laughs> it's just annoying me. Um, and then what we could do is we could like scale it maybe uh, on, what if we do object coordinates? Well, Z's pretty good. Let's scale down. There we go. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna take this roughness and bring it up a little bit like that. Take the color maybe like this. And maybe you add in just a little bit of noise. I feel like we just need like one other type um, of texture. So I might just duplicate this one and then do a mix RGB. Throw that in there. I'll pull this back so it's not so prominent. Might even try multiply, see what that one looks like. Gotta experiment. So like I said, <laughs> all these ideas combined together, you can use some really, really cool stuff. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining. You guys are amazing and I uh, really enjoyed doing this. And I uh, hope you learned a few things. Feel free to throw questions uh, in the chat or in, uh, in the comments later and I'll do my best to answer what I can. And uh, yeah, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And consider becoming a member. You're amazing. Thanks so much. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye. Yeah.